to Falcon Focus. I'm Emily Mossholder, and joining me today is Ms. Gretchen Joyce, a teacher at Fitch High School. Today, we'll be discussing sign language. So first, um, what drew you to learn about the language in the deaf community? I was really interested in learning about sign language. When I was a senior in college, I was writing a, a paper looking for sources, and I watched a YouTube video as a primary source that I was going to use, and there was a deaf man describing something he had witnessed, and he was using huge facial expressions, and his arms were going all over, big, big body language, and the interpreter's voice who was accompanying him was monotone and flat and sounded like the car went this way, then that way. And I was extremely frustrated because that's not what was matching his body language or his facial expressions. So I asked my mom if she could get me sign language lessons. And I was an English major in college and I truly love language. And I really fell in love with it and seeing the translation from English to ASL and ASL to English just lit me up. And so I decided to pursue it. So the um, translation between like English and ASL and then how the interpreter didn't like have the right tone is what drew you in? Right. So I was I was really interested in how you could make a language that isn't heard come alive in a different way. And so I, I watched this person tell a story and the interpreter's voice didn't match. So I was really excited to see if I could do something different, especially with my love of English and with my English major, if I had like a different way of approaching it and as I got into interpreting and translating, I found that I really found a niche for myself. It's kinesthetic, it's movement based, and I thought that students would like it as well. And then how, did the, how does learning ASL benefit the deaf community? Well, anybody who's learning a language to help another community is always going to be beneficial. Uh, of course, um, sign language is muscle memory, so it, it definitely improves your command of English and of ASL. If we can teach it to young children, they tend to have a higher IQ of at least 10 points is what most modern research suggests. And of course, you're becoming culturally aware of another culture. You're being more uh, communicative. Kids today, of course, just look at phones all day, but sign language requires eye contact and interpersonal communication skills. And anytime you're learning a language, it can only benefit you yourself and the culture that you're learning it to be a part of. Oh, okay. And then how do you like handle situations when someone's disrespecting the community? So <clears throat> I think a lot of situations with sign language and as well as other languages, not just sign language as a whole, but if someone's being disrespectful to another culture, I think the most important thing to do is to educate them because I find that disrespect comes from a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And sign language is relatively new. I, I know it's on TikTok and I know it's in the news and on movies and things like that. So a lot of people just don't know what is appropriate and what isn't appropriate, especially talking to someone that can't hear you and what like the best practices and how to approach that. So I, I just try to educate them as much as possible. I am a teacher, so education is typically my number one go-to for things. And then like, um, how, wait, sorry. Um, so um, how do you, is there like any important things to do when speaking with a deaf person or using ASL? So if you're using ASL and if you're not, I would always recommend making eye contact with the person that you're talking with. Um, if you are looking away from someone and signing, then you're not involved in the conversation, you're not listening. It's obviously different than English, uh, especially with teaching. That's why I ask all of my students to be looking at me at all yeah. the time because if you are trying to take notes, then you're not listening to me and listening happens with your eyes because I use my hands as my voice. So I would always recommend looking directly at them. And if you don't know sign language, then absolutely make eye contact with the deaf person you're speaking with. Speak at a regular pace. Don't try to over enunciate your words. That doesn't help. Uh, lip reading is super ineffective, but it is a tool that a deaf person may use to try and make sure that they're being understood and that they understand what you're saying. And of course, if they have an interpreter, what you don't want to do is speak to the interpreter about a deaf person. You never want to speak in the third person. Talk directly to the deaf person. Never say like, oh, hey, would you ask them this question? No, ask yeah. them yourself. You know, speak to them head on and show that you respect them. And then so like when the interpreter, you just listen to what the interpreter says and then watch the deaf person signing? Yes, that's a good point. So when the deaf person responds, you're going to hear an interpreter's voice, but you want to look directly at the deaf person. Okay. The interpreter's just there to pass along information and make sure that it, it's being heard in both facets. And then finally, how do you hope to grow the program at Fitch? 
So far, it's been super great and we have good numbers and the kids are really excited. I'm really impressed with the kids here and how receptive they are to this new program and just how passionate I am about it. But I would really love to have ASL club, get involved with drama club. I would love to see some theater done with like a deaf character in it, with some sign language in it that everyone can be a part of. Um, ASL also has DeVia, which is deaf view image art. And it's a facet of deaf history here in America where they paint and illustrate their experiences as a deaf person living amongst a hearing world of people. So I would love it if I could collaborate with the art department and see if we can get some um, artwork done that's reminiscent of Davia as hearing students. We obviously can't paint our own versions, but we can at least, you know, mimic it and we can um, put signs on it. And I would love to get involved next month is National Deaf History Month. So I'd love to do some thing in the community where everyone can be involved and learn a little bit about it. And we can also shine a light on Austin Town Fitch High School Language Department. Big plans. So like going back to like the play thing, is it like just a character like in the play you want or like an interpreter for the play? Oh, well, like, would that be beneficial that. or not? Because I wasn't sure if like the audience would need that or not. I would love to have a deaf character in a play. Uh, that would be that would be a, a really good starting spot. If there are deaf people in attendance, then they would need to contact um, people in the community that would interpret for them. There are agencies that would provide interpreters for them. Uh, it's a little more complicated when there's more than one role happening. There's typically an interpreter for each person speaking. So if we had a deaf character, then we may be able just to have the performers do some signs as they're performing. And then of course, if deaf people were to come, we would have to work with an agency and get as many interpreters as they needed. Language access accessibility. Okay, well that's the end. Okay. Thank <music> you.